Hi everyone, it's Christy. Welcome to another meal prep video. Today I just have a quick meal prep for you. It is way too hot to be running the oven or cooking over the stove, so I'm just throwing some things together. I guess you could say kind of like bento bowls. The only thing I am going to be doing, I'm going to be cooking some hard boiled eggs in my instant pot, but other than that, I am not going to be slaving over a hot stove today. So if you're looking for a very simple meal prep idea, this one is for you. It's a giant All right, for breakfast we're gonna do protein bento bowls. So basically I'm just gonna be putting in some cottage cheese, some nuts, some hard boiled eggs, and some fruit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my eggs going in the Instant Pot. Okay, so in my Instant Pot down in the bottom I have one cup of water, and then I've got my little egg trivets here. I'm gonna put some eggs on there. I only need one egg for each breakfast, but I'm gonna do some extras because I haven't decided if I'm gonna use an egg with my lunch yet. So I'm just gonna cook some extras and I'll eat them throughout the week. There's 10, I think that'll be good. So normally any of the recipes that I make will be linked down in the description box below. I don't know today though, there's really not recipes because I'm just kind of throwing together some things. So for bento bowls, you just throw together anything you want. Also, the items that you see me using, like my Instant Pot or my meal prep container bowls, anything like that, I'll have those linked down in the description box as well. All right, now for the hard boiled eggs, I do like mine hard boiled. You can do them anywhere from like three minutes to seven minutes, depending how you like them done. So I kind of played around with mine, and for me, seven minutes seems to be the way that I like them. So I'm gonna do a pressure cook on high for seven minutes, and then I'll do a quick release. While those are cooking, I'm gonna wash my fruit. So if you watch my channel, you know that I use my OXO salad spinner and I just add some white vinegar to water. I usually do about one part white vinegar to four parts water. So just mix that all together and then I usually let it sit for maybe about five to 10 minutes. So now I'm just gonna rinse these and then I'm gonna use the same dish to put some ice water in there for my eggs when they're done. For some fun facts about Florida strawberries, Florida ranks number two in the United States for strawberry production, second to California. So let me know in the comments if you're in one of those two states. So some of the fun facts according to FloridaFarmFamily.com are that there are approximately 8,000 acres of strawberries grown in Florida, that strawberries are the only fruit with seeds on the outside, I never thought of that, and strawberries provide fiber, potassium, vitamin C, and powerful antioxidants. So now I'm just getting my ice bath ready for my eggs. So if you live in a state that you get cold tap water, I live in Florida, we never have cold tap water, but if you live in a state that has cold tap water, you can just run cold water over your eggs after. Basically what the ice water does is it just cools the eggs quickly so that it stops the cooking process. And also it makes the eggs contract and pull away from the shell and that way it's easier to peel them. So immediately when they're done cooking, you wanna get them right into that cold water. So I want these to sit in here for at least 10 minutes. So while those are sitting cooling, I'm going to start assembling the meal prep containers. So I've got my fruit in my meal prep containers. I'm using my three compartment ones. I think these are gonna be easier. So I'm using apples and strawberries in two of them and then a half a banana and strawberries in the other four. And then I just have some silicone muffin cups here that I'm gonna put my mixed nuts in. And then next to the mixed nuts, I'll put my egg and I'm not gonna peel the eggs. I just put them the shell right in there. And then when we go to eat them, then I'll peel them. And then in this compartment, I'm gonna put some cottage cheese. So you all know I love the good culture cottage cheese. I honestly prefer the low fat kind as far as the flavor, but they didn't have any. So I'm just using this whole milk kind. And I'm just gonna take a measuring cup and just kind of scoop it into there. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of black pepper to each one. And then the hard boiled egg.
All right, so I do want to crack open an egg just to show you what the seven minutes does. And I actually let it sit. I say I do a quick release right after, but I usually always let my Instant Pot sit for one minute just to let it naturally release a little bit. So one good thing about Instant Pot <laughs> eggs, look at this. They peel so nice. Look at that. That is one of the things that I always hated about making hard boiled eggs is peeling it because the peel just, to me, it always was like in little tiny pieces. Instant Pot eggs, oh my gosh, perfect. So let me show you. I have a recipe on my website for deviled eggs that I make with these and it's so good. So that's how I like mine. So if you like them more of a soft boil, then just cook them a little bit less. And one thing, if you're new here, you'll see six here. I do not eat the same thing six days in a row. I'm doing three for me and three for my husband. We typically like to have the same thing about three times a week. So usually this will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or sometimes we'll skip a day. It might be Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. So three days is usually all I do. I usually telework about two days a week, so I'll make my own breakfast. Or some days I just have cereal or something easy like that. So those are our breakfasts. They're kind of like basically protein breakfast bentos. For lunch this week, I'm gonna do a little bit of a spin on my Greek chicken euros that I have made before. These are so good. I don't wanna actually make it into a sandwich now, obviously, it'll be all soggy. So I'm gonna do kind of a Greek chicken pita bento, so to speak. So I have here some little pita pockets I'm just gonna put in each one. I actually only have five here, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'll just make a salad the other day for me. So one thing you can do is if you don't wanna cook at all, you could definitely do some deli chicken and just roll it up and put it in your container. I'm gonna actually make some chicken. So I thought I had some more of this Aldi chicken tenderloins. I thought I had a whole bag, but it's not a whole bag. So I took out one of my butcher box chicken breasts. I'm gonna put this all in the Instant Pot and cook it. I'm gonna do it frozen. I have some homemade broth here that's in one cup portions. I think I'm gonna put two cups in the bottom of the Instant Pot with the chicken. So I do have a video on making my own homemade broth and how I portion it like this. I will link that down in the description box below. I'm gonna use this tatsiki sauce. This is really good, spinach and artichokes tatsiki sauce, but feel free to use whatever you want. I also have some green olives there. And then I have this feta cheese that I get from Aldi. This is an eight ounce pack. So what I usually do when I get it is I just cut it into 16 so then I know each piece is a half an ounce. And then of course tomatoes. Um, I'm gonna put a yellow pepper in this time and also I'm gonna put a red onion. I don't have that over here yet. So let me get the chicken started. All right, I hope the lighting's all right. We're starting to get <laughs> a little bit of a storm here. So here I have my two cups of broth. I actually have my Instant Pot on saute right now just so that I can get that melting a little bit and then I'll add my chicken. All right, after that's melted, just add the chicken. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I'm gonna pressure cook this. I'm gonna do this one for eight minutes. Usually I'll just do six when I have the real smaller pieces, but these are bigger pieces. So I'm gonna do eight minutes, and then I'm gonna do a natural release for seven. So now I'm just gonna go through and cut all my vegetables. I'm peeling my cucumbers, but as I always say, you do you. If you prefer the skins on your cucumbers, then leave the skins on. And also the same thing with the vegetables. Use whatever type of vegetables you want for this. I'm gonna link the recipe to the chicken gyro down below. And in fact, the chicken gyro doesn't use peppers, but in this one I am. But again, just put in whatever you would normally put in a salad, you can put in this.
The tzatziki sauce that I'm using today is a spinach and artichoke kind, but they also have a cucumber dill and I believe a parmesan kind that's really good as well. And that brand I get from Aldi. And then also from Aldi, the pita bread that I'm using today is just this whole wheat pita bread. Uh, but again, you can use whatever brand you prefer. So we decided that we're just gonna fold the bread up and kind of use it like little pita pieces because I think it's gonna be just too hard to put everything into this that day. Plus some of the bread is kind of split a little bit. So we just decided we're gonna just kind of fold it up, maybe tear it apart a little bit and then just use it kind of like little pita toast that day. about using my salad bowls so a lot of you have seen me use these in the past these are excellent for salads they have compartments I usually put my lettuce down in the bottom and then up here it has spots that you can put the things that get more soggy I guess you could say and then you put your salad dressing in here so I thought about using this but I decided I think that these are gonna work fine I'm not gonna be putting lettuce in these so I think what I'm gonna do is just put the chicken down in the bottom and then I'll put the tomato and cucumber that kind of will make a little bit of moisture. I'll put that over top and that way it's going to keep the chicken real moist because the liquid from the tomato and the cucumber is going to kind of go down in the chicken. So I think it'll be okay. Like I said, I don't keep these in my fridge for five or six days. These will only be in my fridge for three days maximum. All right, I went a little bit long. I'm at 10 minutes. I'm going to let out the rest of the pressure. So I'm going to get that on a cutting board and let it cool a little bit before I cut it up. So now I'm just going to put the rest of the vegetables over top. going to crumble the feta cheese over the top. Finally, I'm just going to add some green olives to each one. So that's our, I guess, Greek chicken pita bento. I ended up ordering some home chef meals for dinners this week, so I did not do my own DIY dinner kits. So this is what I ended up with. And for my snacks, I basically just took some carrots. I didn't, I just peeled them. I didn't even cut them into pieces. I just stuck them in a big mason jar there. I also have some kiwi, apple, banana, and PB2 powder that I like to mix with my apples. And then I also have some Greek yogurt here that I love mixing with peanut butter and bananas. That is really good. So that's my meal prep for this week. So let me know in the comments if you like these type of meal preps where there's just things that you throw together. I will let you know my husband is not a fan of the bento style, but I really enjoy them and I really like that I just don't have to heat my kitchen. I don't have to be running my stove, running my oven. So feel free to post down below a favorite recipe of yours that you would love to see me do for a future meal prep and I will be happy to check it out and possibly feature it on a future meal prep. So I hope you like this video. As always, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you're new, I would love for you to be part of our family. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one.